What's happening? Here we are. Right, this is what I'm gonna attempt to do. I've not seen this done in the UK for so long, and it's one of my favorite details. Um, go abroad and you see them doing it in their way, but they use a form of yeso, where it's a quick mix, quick sticky, it comes easy, but I'm not really about that in the UK, are oh, we? Sand and cement men. Right, what I'm gonna do is do a brick vaulted ceiling, okay? On this dressage. So in keeping with the tradition of the house, the build, the detail, I've done an exposed wall here. Round the bottom, we've got all timber planking going in, you know, like the cladding, like the old days, really nice. So we've got exposed walls, so we've not got too much, right? So what we're gonna do is a brick vaulted ceiling. So I've got my man, if you can see, we're trying to dodge the light as well, Paul Jamie, okay? If you don't follow Paul Jamie, get over to his Instagram, I'll put a link up, follow him, okay? Now, compliment really, because I'm very, very fussing who I use for my work, you know? He's a great chibi, so I've got him into good. Basically, put our heads together, you know? Because I believe in let trades do their trade and I do my trade, you know? I'm not a believer in jack of all trades, master of none. So what we're gonna do is form a former, we've worked it out and I'm gonna talk you through it. And you can watch us from the very start to the end and how we come up with this excellent idea. And hopefully when we remove the former at the end, Good, so how are we gonna work this out? Traditionally, like the Egyptians done, global equations, okay? Forget your biographies and all this. We're talking traditional than that, we're going back hundreds and hundreds of years. In fact, 490 BC. Right, what I'm gonna do is take an oval measurement from internal, okay, internal to internal. Take that measurement, okay? We're gonna split it in the middle, and then we're gonna give it 100 mil above, because I'm gonna go a brick on edge on this arch, okay? Now, the reason I'm going brick on edge is we need as many joints as possible to symmetrically take the compression of the weight. Now, arches love to spread the weight, the gravity of it all, but they don't like to stretch, okay? So as many joints as you can when you're doing these vaulted ceilings. Now, I was lucky enough to take part in one many years ago when I was a youngster, and I didn't know then what I'd be doing there, so I'm so grateful for what I learned then. So, we're gonna go a slight pitch on this, 100 mil, it works at about 12 degrees. Okay, we don't want too much because the key factors in this, I've got another steel coming across from outside to take the roof line, okay? So this has to fit just under. So my top of brick and top of block work is roughly about 75 mil lower than plate. So I've got 75 mil tolerance to play with. Now, from his point here to this point here, if you can see this, just have a look, close look. She's level, okay? So, that's a good start. So we know our form is gonna sit inside to inside. Now the reason for this is, my brickwork is gonna bond over onto the internal walls to start the strength of the structure. So when the, symmetrically the compression is spreading, it's spreading to solid foundations. It's good to have two parallel movements there okay to format the arch these are the key factors a lot of bricklayers don't take in consideration because if there's any weight going on top it spreads remember what i said it doesn't like to stretch it likes to spread so it's important to have two parallel structures now any key building you're looking london uh, america or anywhere around or barcelona is another good one you always see an arch with two spreaders what we mean by spreads is two piers, then there might be another arch forming, okay? So the capacity, the tolerance, and the weight can spread evenly. Right, so we know this is level, so now we need to knock the template up, which Jamie's done. So if I show you this, yeah, there we go. So that's gonna sit inside to inside. Now we're gonna give it 10, 20 mil. So it's important, so when we release the former after, okay, let's move this out so you can see. When we release the former after, it's fine to come down. You don't want to go tight to tight, because when you take it down, you'll have problems. You don't want that. So my me sitting there, 20 mil each side, I know my first brick is going to bomb over. It should be good. So after the release, bomb she goes. When doing these vaulted scenes, it's important you think about the next job in front. Don't rush. Think about the aftermath, and I'll go through how I'm going to lay, etc. as you see me move on. So, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna let Jamie get in his own and do his work, Paul, sorry, Paul, Jamie, get in his own and do his work, and we video little short clips of him, and again, I'll put his link up, follow him, 
because as bricklayers, it's important we understand the formers, the degrees, the weight capacity. I think that's very, very important, okay? So like I said, if you're gonna attempt this, get a master of their trade to do it, okay? Because we're not chippies. We don't do chipping every day. Let a chippy do his job and we do our job. So, let's crack on. Good. Good, so this is really interesting, right? Because we've got my knowledge versus Paul's knowledge. Now we've gone over both formulas and both formulas are right. So I'm gonna show you both formulas, okay? And see what you think of them and you of what you wanna get with. I mean, it depends on how your mind thinks, right? So watch, stay with me on this, right? Overall measurement and a template, okay? We divide that by two so we find the center. So when we find the center, which is here, okay? We need 100 mil, which is our arch depth. Okay, 100 mil to arc depth. Get yourself a pen and paper if you need. 100 mil to arc depth. Okay, so once we've got 100 mil, we find the square root of 100 mil, okay, which is 10 mil. Right, now we've got the 10 mil. Now, we need to divide that by 2 because we've halved this. So you've got A and B. Okay? So to find the square root of 100, which is 10, divide by 2, which is 5. Okay? That gives us the starting point of five degrees. Now if you come here close up, this starting point here is five degrees. So we mark the five degrees, and we mark the centre 100 mil, and then we just bring the true line around. So what you've got, okay, I'm gonna go deep into this like the old Egyptians. Right, A, okay, measurement, the square root of A, yes, equals B, and then, which is here. Divide B by two, equals C. So square root of A, equals B. Divide B by two, equals C, the starting length, okay? Now that is the traditional bricklayer's way of working out the true form of the arch. Over this distance, because you don't want to stick, you don't want to less. So it's important, keep the arch depth. So if you get a drawing and the arch depth is 200 mil, that obviously determines Okay, so again, we're going to go over again. Overall length, half, get your depth, height of your arch, 100 mil. The square root of 100 mil is 10. Divide it by two because you've got two halves, okay? Equals five, and that gives you C. So A squared equals B, B divided by two equals C. Okay, now in my new book, I talk about these formulas. It's very, very important. You know it's as a brick that you should be taught. So let's go through Jamie's way of work this out. Cool. So I just did it using a bit of uh, sort of knowledge and a bit of experience, really. Um, I just took the measurement from inside. tied in with um, Dean's theory. Good, so what we're gonna do is cut a template, Paul's theory, and one of my theory. Now, I'm telling you now, my theory is to the point cut it will probably be within one or two mil, okay? So I reckon Paul's theory will be one or two mil at tomorrow, okay? Now, one or two mil is nothing, but it's interesting to see how the chippy works and how the brick layer works and put the two of together. Listen, both the same outcome. Let's go.
Done there, just put her into place. Now we're going to go above and make sure she's exactly where we need it to be. When we've got that, we screw the accuracy for safety. Given <laughs> so. right, okay, so the form is up, we've put her into place. Lovely, so let's have a look at what we're doing. We're going to go above now. The brick sits here, lovely, and then she goes over, stretch a bond. Now, the important part was the ridge. As you can see, spot on level. Okay, so the calculation, the formula we used, that I used, spot on, okay? Now, the next question bit I've got. You can see we've continued Flemish bond up. Flemish bond over the lint this side here. Obviously, that's not gonna work. With header so what i'm gonna do is start the header half on and i'm gonna cut a piston over the front to maintain this flemish bond so i'm gonna cut a piston brick in there so we've got symmetrical that aesthetically it looks spot on the natural ridge I'm getting quite excited really you can picture that now can't you going over beautiful might even do a little some sort of feature in the middle but I don't want to overkill it. Oh, right. So, gentlemen, craftsmanship, spot on. Absolutely over the moon. The choice of brick, complete wrong decision. The contrast I was going for, it's okay visualizing it and seeing it on paper, but it had to go up. And do you know what? I just wasn't happy. And deep down, I don't know how I've done that mistake. How could I disrespect the London stock with this new cheap shit, you know? So I can't compromise the quality of this house and how hard I've worked. So I've just took it down and we're gonna redo it. But I'm going to do it at the stock, so continuation. I'm going to forget the contrast. We live and we learn. Every day we're learning. And it's important you be honest, okay? I didn't sleep last night. Up and down, up and down. Craftsmanship, like I said, spot on. Happy with it. But the choice of brick, confusing salt with sugar, I think. Good morning. Right, here we go. What's happening? Hope you're well and safe. Right, it's time. Over to Dean. Right. Round two. I'll explain about round one later in the video, unless you watch me on my Instagram account. You follow me for my daily content, you'll know what's happening in round one. Um, it is what it is. Right, okay. What we're going to do now is mark out this radius. So, get yourself your two bricks. Always do it in bricks. Don't just take measurements. 
an average, take an average. Because stocks are always bigger. This will be around about 470, 480. Yeah, 475, spot on. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is take 475, which is there. And we're gonna put a nice rough in right. Right, so we take her there. Right, for me, that needs to go around and stop that from swinging. Because that'll give us two, three more, it's important. Right, if you, can you see what I'm doing here? Not just my hand, yeah? Good. Move on the timber, just give me a little bit of edge. Good. Listen, you're going to get a rough blemish like that, but we're not stupid, are we? You can see where that line is, you know, it's more the size of it. You guide it in. So there you go. So if your line comes out a little bit screw with, don't be stupid and you know the size of a brick, 215, 225, or whatever stock you're using. Just gauge it round. So, yeah, let's have a double check. Always double check. Measure twice, cut once. Oh, make sure the distance is there. Okay. She's within five ten mil, which is good for these stocks. Because that's the look we want, the contour, you know, it's not done with a laser. Not like them old metric crap that I used the other day. But anyway, let's get on. Right, so what we do is you see this 10 mil weight we put in, old traditional method. It's 10 mil by 10 mil. But the reason for that is it helps in my gauging. Okay? So my gauging stays true and as consistent as we can be throughout the span. Now, also, when we take the former down, we just pull the 10 mil rope out, and that gives us a nice consistent joint. Not only in depth, but in width as well. Now the depth 10 mil gives us a good adhesive, and the width gives us a nice consistent looking joint. It saves you grinding the granny out of it all day. I see these people inside grinding, grinding, I think, God blimey, you're in your prep work, lads. You know, you should all know that. Right, my next bar is the LX bar. Put him, just take in the curve, we put her in, this is straight from the bed joint, okay? So the brick on edge comes in, adding a little bit more strength to her. So watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get the uh, stretcher. Now, when perping up, you can see, angle off the rope side, because you don't want muck hitting the rope, pushing the brick slightly up. Or even worse, you do not want to be taking this down and having loads of grinding to do. So tilt her on the angle, push her in, repair the rope each side. Happy with that, happy with that, yep, yep. Bring her to where the bit's got to be in place. And give her a good squeeze. Make sure you're compressing all that mortar. Up overhead. Yeah, lovely. And then not too worried about that because that can squeeze in but again make sure your ball's clean so let's get the next one in. you're up there and i'm down here that's what's about oh. Trickery dickery. Fuck. Again, nice squeeze in. Taking that angle. Beautiful. And you should have. Yep, she's beautiful. So we're just to the angle. So, did this work? It's just prep work. Trust me, as you'll see later in the video, when I take the foreman down, 
take your time on your prep work. It will help you in your finished product. Every bit, put it a bit later. So it always makes sure the foot is completely clean. It's not good. My next point of call is the brick saw hanging up, just to help take the compression of the slab above. So we've got a screw going over. And that just gives us a bit of strength. So we get there in there. Also a pain when you're reaching over. Radius is still true. Beautiful. Good. Right, so she's coming round. Lovely. You can see the way the rope's helping me out with my gauging. Okay, and I'm just following the line round. We're making sure 40, 50 mil sitting on our party wall, okay? So we're trying to give as much strength as possible. Now, when I come to the end, I'm gonna put some brick tour over as well, just to sort of hold her in on the top of the brick, I mean, for when we do the screed. So everything we do is important. Like I'm gonna sit you off for a little while and just concentrate and then uh, I'm gonna put the radio on, listen to some music. Oh. Every bit, a little bit later. So it always makes sure the foot is completely clean. Good. My next point of call is the brick saw hanging up, just to help take the compression of the slab above. So we've got a screw going over. And that just gives us a bit of strength. So we get there in there. Also a pain when you're reaching over. All of these, different sizes and stocks. I mean, I've handpicked them before we loaded that. There's some you miss. And it's a good cup or mil. But remember, it's gonna give you the look as well. So don't try and be too consistent on it. Sighting that curve through that radius, making sure she's true. Give the trowel, feeling for any discrepancies. There.
Just watch your hair wrists as well, Miss Davies. When you take this form, evidently you'd be, you're going to see a lot of the Harris in description. In description, should I say. That rope needs to be pulled tight. I'm on the rope, so it's got me. That's it. Help me out here. Yeah. Red header through like a banding just to separate it. You notice I'm keeping the bond with it 
you know, important. So that's the perp there. It should go half there. In. Let's fit it there and strength wise, give it the same. Sorry about the camera view, guys. Who's breathing in there? Mm. Look at that film that radio is on me trail. She's lovely. You never know doing it like this because the underside, the former. So what we're doing is we're laying face side to the eye here. It's like when you build a four inch wall and face up both sides. The face side is the side you're working. So the indiscrepancy is the other side. So with this, you're splitting your indiscrepancies, the inconsistency. So if you've got a rock up, you split it both sides. Otherwise, this would be lovely, and the side would be hatching and grinning everywhere. Be interesting to see how this comes out because, uh, obviously, um, cuts on the underside. I like them the best I can, but you have to reverse it almost, you know. Make sure. Was 
She's a good one. And there, uh, half bombed. Have a look. Here we see the foreigners doing this. And they use that strong adhesive muck because they're doing ceilings or whatever. It's called Yeso. Worked in Spain with it. Literally, it acts with the components of the air, the O2. So the particles mix and it goes off like brick solid. Incredible stuff. But I don't know why it's not passed here in the UK. I don't know why. Pick some water. That's what we use. Right, so it's all in. Now, what I've done is I've left my rough cut of the bats up and my head, of course. I play the banding course. And the reason I've done that is to help the teeth, the slab, over. Give it another little bit of strength. So we've got the brick tore up. I'm going to put a few reinforcing rods through. Just swiping off. We give her a good point to make sure all the joints were compressed. Now we've done the best that we can do, the rest is in God's hands. Now what we're doing is just getting the access off because we want the, the clean surface for the concrete to stick to. But you can see the concrete's now going to grip to these bats and form a bit of strength. So what we're doing is we're looking at compression, not tension. Tension's when it's dropping, compression's when it's pushing. Don't confuse salt with sugar. Understand your science. Good. We'll do one of my videos talking about compression and tension and how mathematically you work these arches out. And basically, arches should be worked out true to the opening. So, depending on the opening size, depends on the curve and the degree of the arch. I see some people do an opening size and they do a massive arch on it, it doesn't go. So, structurally, that's wrong. If you ask a structural engineer, a building surveyor, they'll tell you. But obviously, a lot of you guys now on new builds, I saw a video the other day arches and corbels, the geezers put a plastic template up and put an arch over the top of it, run ahead of course. Is that an arch? I don't know. You know I'd call an arch where you see the guys do the form of their self, work it out, work out the degree in the gauge, you know. That's more something like a quick fit. You know, unfortunately I know a lot of your trails want to do it and you're, you've got your hands tied, you know. I'll get that. But all I can do is show you different ways, so hopefully you learn from it. Right, let's get this concrete up. windy up here you can see me she's done now so i'll let that dry give a little brush off just knee up a little bit flatten her out and she's done a lot of work a lot of detail it's such a small area big appreciation goes out to the forefathers of brick layers before me who do all this work who didn't have the tools that we had today that's why i want to do this as traditional as possible you know I think it's important. See you on the, the exit in a minute.
Well, I'm not the kind to kiss and tell, but I've been seen with fairer. <laughs> good morning, gentlemen. What's happening? You all good? Right, uh, back on this today. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm feeling a little bit anxious. Um, your journey's pumping a little bit. Didn't sleep properly last night, even at my age, because I'm taking the former down today, you know? And um, if you don't feel anxious about doing stuff like this, uh, Check your pulse, <laughs> or check your love for your work. Right, no building surveyor, or building engineer, or structural engineer was used on this, guys. All this mathematics was worked out, and the compression versus the degree versus the tension was solely worked out by myself and my knowledge, okay? This isn't actually just an arch going over a doorway, it's a vaulted ceiling, so there's a lot of different mathematics going into play. <clears throat> so, we're gonna take the app goes down, get the former down, have a look and actually work out how much grinding that we've got to do. Now I've roped it up, as I said earlier, should be minimal, but it is what it is. So listen, if you see me rubbing my head like that a little bit, you know why, let's get this down. Persuasion sack I didn't want to do. That feels heavy. That end. Oh, shit. Jesus Christ. Oh, Mary Jesus Christ. She's a good one. <laughs> oh, beautiful, guys. If you see what I just see, unbelievable. Fuck me. Fuck me. Sorry for swearing. Have a look at this. You know the the, uh, the blue rope we was talking about? Right, this is where it comes in effective. With the blue rope is 10 mil by 10 mil, so it's left us a 10 mil joint consistent and 10 mil depth for adhesive. Okay, so when I point up now, she's gonna stick lovely. Now the important thing about this guys, is I also use a 10 mil rope for gauging. So they have to mark no gauging system out coming across. So what we do moments before while building this, we have to think two, three steps in front. A lot of bricklayers spend a day grinding out and I don't understand that. Knowledge is power. Take from this video about prep. Fail to prepare, prepare to work harder. Now let's go on the pole with Dino. <laughs> so here we go, watch. Lovely. One. And you just pull them out nice consistent. Two. Pull from this side. If you're confident in your build, you can pull quite hard. If not, if you're one of those spines and like stand in the corner, then you better pull softly, my son. <laughs> Good. Oh, a little bit of tug there. What we got going on? Excellent. Really feel the radius as I'm pulling. Really feel it curve round. Absolutely beautiful. So I'm really gonna enjoy this project. Really gonna enjoy it. Really satisfying. Especially those who know what I've been through with it. You know, on the darker side of things. So, let me give you some more information, guys. In the old days, they used to use box sash thread. You know the string for the box sash windows? That's what they used to do. But evidently, they used to have to double it up because it wasn't 10 mil. 
or in some cases they should tilt the brick on the out so it's to go in so i've just moved times on again but using the same methods guys let's get this point up i cannot wait to see this i am so proud so i'm masked up and ready now for the old ear rolls the old lugs right what we're going to do is put a nice four inch grinder over her zip out the perps i've got some rope that's cool so i'm going to zip her up as well and basically get him prepped ready for the pointing. taught me you know and a message to all you youngsters out there listen if you're watching a good bricklayer absorb like a sponge because that knowledge is power and you'll never know when that will come into effect we're like an encyclopedia page 89 you may not go to page 89 for 16 years but when you do guess what you know what page 89 says not like jimmy standing next to you again oh, oh, oh what do you do now I can't Instagram or YouTube this. Um, um, do you understand what I'm saying? These traditions go back years. So listen, learn. You can see I'm quite excited. <laughs> okay, now she's already have a point up now. She's come out really good. You know, it uh, took me probably... What's the time? 20, 20 minutes, flush it through. What I've done was there was no blemishes. As I said before, you know me allowing the shutter in? muck free muck free don't no snots on there any any mortar debris excess anything will can arch the brick up so the brick lays flat on the former because what you don't want is indiscrepancies underside and she's fantastic normally i see a lot of people remove arches and there's all muck blemishes everywhere uh you know i'll probably add one maybe two and all we got to do with the grinder turn it up and just polished her off got her off they force it enough that it stops you quite lucky because even when you polish it off, they look really nice. So, pointing tools, what I'm going to be using, obviously, be WHS, nearly done without it. Right. Me three timbers. Different sizes in lengths. This one's comes up to a nice peak, what I carved out. If you have a look, you can see it comes up to a nice peak. Gives me a bit of length, so... I've done an extra long handle, so with that peak, you're trying to push right in deep, yeah? So the extra handle gives me that leverage to push in. Okay, remember this fucking knowledge I'm telling you. Right, short and sharp, thick, has to be big with a thumb, push it right in, just to push it right in. Short the leverage on this, okay? Because if you're using a thick one, your joints are quite thick, so you want to push it in. You don't want to be there with a longer leverage, okay? And then just for the change it up, a medium leverage, thickness, but to a point as well. So thicker than the thin bit, shorter on the leverage, just really an indiscrepancy. So if I get an in between this joint and that joint, I'm okay. Right, first of all, I'm gonna apply them up with my plaster small tool. Gonna get her in there, gonna sharp almost like a weather point, weather struck. Sharp the end of the shell, the arrows of the shell right through then I should be pulling my timbers. But listen, what I'm gonna do is gonna set you up to have a watch, but guys, I need to turn the radio on. It's killing me, I need to listen to some Capital Gold, okay? So uh, I've set it up, you can have a watch, but uh, we'll put some music on. See, what we actually go through, everyone posting videos, take your hats off to them, whether you agree with them or not. It's all about taking what you can from the video, you know? Um, you might take 10%, but 10% is better than nothing, you know what I mean? But I appreciate it, guys, because, you know, it is frustrating. It is frustrating setting up the camera and bloody 
getting the right views and whatnot. People don't see that side of things. So hats off guys, all the trades who are trying to share their knowledge. And thumbs down to those who are doing it for money. Really compressing that lucky. She's good. As I said this before, you see a lot of these foreigners, they use, they don't use a former, they use yeso. The particles in that mortar goes right up within seconds of using it. So they don't need a former. But you know what we're like here in the UK, we like to do it thoroughly and better. Do you know? Sand and cement, bricks and mortar is what I require to take this vault wall much higher. So I've done a bit of work in Spain and it's amazing that Yeso literally just goes straight off as hard as a brick. You know, and that's why you watch a lot of the videos on YouTube or whatever you see them doing it and you how they do that, you know. Well oh, come on. There's only one way to do this. The Great Britain way. Long live the Queen. Oh, a little bit of rope stuck in there. Pain in your ass, that bit, eh? Let's get her out. Oh, there go. Might be able to go up there, it's easy. So what I've done with a, with a point in was a bucket of sand, half a bucket of sharp, and half a bucket of dust. Oh, sorry, two buckets of building sand, three quarters of a bucket of sharp, and half a bucket of um, cement. What you don't want to do is be over cautious, put loads of cement in, because it'll just crack, the joints will crack. So you've just got to formulate it the same as you would as you just laying bricks horizontally, like you know. Yeah. I'm going to do now is pull the perps through exactly the same fashion as I've done the bed joints. I'm going to just give her a really good tug. I'm going to just move the footing over so I'm not going up against it. There she goes. So I'm just going to pull there. As you can see, yeah, you can see. Complete. Like a, almost like a weather shock. Slight angle on the small tool. Give her that compression. Oh, 
knocked up the muck beautiful, just right. You need a little bit of durability in it. You don't want it too dry, but you don't want it too wet. So important. Stand on you, might give you a little bit of wobble. Michelangelo film. Uh, bear with me because I'm on me Jonah today and uh, I'm trying to do filming for you guys and all sorts. So let's have a look. So I've got my timber job that we spoke about earlier. So I'm just gonna pull her through now. Nice and neat. Yeah, so we're gonna push, pull her through. Just to get that roughness on that joint, as you can see. There. You can see there. There. Beautiful. And we're just pushing the front. Just to give it that roughness. As I'm pulling her, I can pull, I can feel the base. There's no discrepancies, everything's laid true. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. You know, hats off to the craftsmen who've done it many years ago under the railways, you know. People don't understand, you walk past it probably a thousand times a day, people. They don't understand the craftsmanship that's gone in. You know, such a shame. Yeah, pulling them right through here, look. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Woo! Oh, she's a cracker. She really is a cracker. Really proud of this one. Had to beat this one. Pulling on me Ben Shermans, all me farrows hanging up. Little look up, chandelier light deflecting off the brickwork. I shall spare a fault in here, I tell you, for the work I've done. Okay, right, so, look, I just, I just showed you the, the weather struck joints all round, all through, so I've got a nice joint now. What I'm going to do is have a cup of tea, let this go off, and then give her a brush through. So, the puppies are doing really good. And this is the runt of the litter, but he's getting favouritism, ain't ya? We refuse to name them because we don't want to get too attached to them. But it is hard, because they're so lovely. Tommy boy, you stand at ease, soldier. Good boy, good girl. Here. What we're gonna do now is give her a big circular brush, okay? And then I'll go over with me jointer, any discrepancies. So let's have a little look. Beautiful. Woo! 
We've got your eyes on this, the old guys. Should be able to have goggles on, really, but. Uh, hold back the tradition. That's it. What I'll do now is give her a little bit of pull through, not too much. It's anything I'm not happy with. That joint looks nice and rough. Remember the idea was it for it to look rusticky, not it looking too sharp. Yeah, I think she's here. I think we've got her, guys. She's a good one. Very happy. Very, very, very happy. Ladies and gentlemen, is a vault we've seen. Craftsman, he was doing a repair job, but he couldn't repair it. It was so live, so we had to take it down and redo it. Now, taking it down was a skill in itself, you know, it, it was so hard. But what I did do as a youngster is absorb all the information and watch the craftsman and just absolutely just studied. Obviously, I knew one day that I would be doing one. Now, I've not seen one of these brick vaulted ceilings for so long, years in fact. And uh, it's ironic because the first stage I've done, the craftsmanship was really good, really happy with it. Choice of brick, wrong decision. So does that come under my craftsmanship? Yes, it does. So I made a mistake. Um, so we took it down and went again. So ironically, now I've done three vaulted ceilings, brickwork vaulted ceilings in my life so far. Touch the wood. So it's ironic. And another video I want to see, a bit of tumbling. I'm not seeing tumbling in for a long while. And now I'm seeing a little bit more of it. It's really good, guys. You know, we're bringing that detail back. And hopefully I've inspired some youngsters to learn and some used brick lads if you're doing your own projects. So implement this, this detail. Just do it, you know, go for it. That's what we're about. We're all educated men. So listen, guys, thank you, Paul Jamie. Follow him, like I said, um, for the... Um, the shuttering, the former. Thanks to me boys again for helping me out learning. And thanks to George and Thomas, who, like I said earlier, those two boys were year 10, 11 of school. I made them out of Dove School because they were interested in coming on the trail. What them boys don't know is, hopefully I'm wrong. They probably won't do one in their lifetime. 
But when one comes up, they can say, oh, well, don't mind them with a brick layer. That's the same as what I had done. So they would learn a lot more in that day with me than what they would at school in that day, okay? Um, and that's what it's all about, passing this information on so everyone can learn and we can watch and enjoy it. And hopefully, that's, you know, that's what we can do. So guys, listen, thank you all much for the support. It's unbelievable. Listen, the Instagram, if not following me, go over Instagram, it's gone ridiculous, you know. I'm keeping real. Um, exclusive to my rights, I'm an educated man, and there's not a price on that. I'm turning away companies after companies um, who want to sponsor me, who want me to do shout outs, like 25% off. Guys, listen, if you're going to get followers, get real followers for who you are, not because you're in a local supermarket giving away deals. So, get over Instagram and follow it, you can see a bit more of my everyday life. Okay, with me boys, me working, me dogs, just what I do. So, guys, listen, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for the support. God bless, good health, look after yourself.